In this section, we'll take a look at mitochondrial DNA replication. Mammalian mitochondria contain multiple copies of a circular, double-stranded DNA genome, approximately 16.6 kb in length. The two strands of the mitochondrial DNA differ in their base composition, with one being rich in guanine residues and the other in cytosine residues. This makes it possible to separate a heavy and a light strand by density centrifugation. The mitochondrial DNA contains one longer non-coding region, also referred to as the control region. In the NCR, there are promoters for polycystronic transcription, one for each of the mitochondrial strands, the light strand promoter and the heavy strand promoter. The NCR also harbors the origin of replication for the heavy strand, as the light strand will serve as the template for the replication of the heavy strand. There is also an origin of replication for the light strand that's located on the heavy strand. This is located in a region near a tRNA cluster that's shown in pink. Mammalian mitochondrial DNA is replicated by proteins distinct from those that are used in nuclear DNA replication and many are related to replication factors identified in bacterial phages. DNA polymerase gamma is the main replicative polymerase in mitochondria. The helicase used in the process is known as twinkle, and the initial primase polymerase complex is POL-RMT for mitochondria. Mitochondrial replication is initiated at the origin for the heavy chain by polymerase RMT. This proceeds unidirectionally around the mitochondrial DNA, displacing the original heavy chain. Mitochondrial single-stranded binding proteins will bind to the parental heavy chain and protect it during the replication of the new heavy chain. You can see the twinkle helicase complex here and polymerase gamma as it mediates replication after the primase complex lays down a small RNA primer. When the replisome passes the origin of replication for the light strand, it forms a stem loop structure. The primase complex, pole RMT, will then recognize the stem loop and it can lay down a primer at this region. After about 25 nucleotides have been placed down, pole gamma will then take over the synthesis of the light chain. The synthesis of the two strands then proceeds in a continuous manner until two full double-stranded DNA molecules have been formed. Curiously, not all replication events that start at the heavy chain origin will continue to full circle. Instead, about 95% of the time, they get terminated after about the first 650 nucleotides at a sequence known as the termination associated sequence or the TAS. This creates a short DNA fragment known as the 7S DNA fragment and this will remain bound to the parental L strand while the parental H strand is displaced in this structure that's called the D loop. The function or importance of the D loop structure is unclear and just how replication is terminated at the TAS is also not known yet. In the next section, we'll move back into the nucleus where we'll look at the replication of telomeres and we'll talk about replicative senescence.